is so I can get just a couple dollars of ad revenue from it because this is extremely valuable information. So like and subscribe. I'm going to be documenting all the check engine light stuff and all the stuff that you can gleam information from this specific platform and use it on every platform because there's going to be similarities. It's all normal stuff. Camshafts, rocker arms, lifters, pistons, rotating assemblies, all the basic stuff in all the engines. This camshaft right here looks very nice, but there's some damage on it. See how that's a little bit ate up? And this is the trigger wheel or reluctor wheel or whatever you want to call it. The camshaft position sensor sits right here and reads what this wheel tells it to. And the reason why this one got damaged is because the timing chain stretched, wore out, or the timing chain tensioner itself failed, and then the valves contacted the pistons. That's called an interference engine. And if it's not an interference engine, they typically call them freewheeling engines. And that way, if the timing belt or the timing chain completely gets cut or breaks off or stretches, uh, then you're not gonna interfere the pistons with the valves, they won't hit. But whenever the pistons and the valves hit, then you can cause damage in your valve train. And that can relate all the way back to your camshaft. Now, the intake valves are actually larger than the exhaust valves. So most of the time, it only bends the intake valves. Occasionally, it will also bend the exhaust valves. But so far, I haven't seen to where it damages the exhaust camshaft. Now you see this exhaust camshaft has two different profiles of lobes and there's a little groove in here where whenever it reaches a certain RPM, the ECM specifies under certain driving conditions, usually around 3000 RPM, it will slide this profile over so that you got more lift on your exhaust. That's why the Audi is a TFSI and the VW is just TSI. They don't have this for the exhaust side. but there's a little ball and a spring in here, and if people move this around, you can shoot that ball and spring out. I showed that in a different video, but you just wanna make sure that all of these are stiff. I wouldn't really move them around side to side too much, but before you take the cylinder head off, you can kind of push it back and forth. Before you take the camshaft tray off, you can kind of push it back and forth a little bit, and then that kind of centers all of these because it can be tricky installing this. That's not what, I, I don't want to get too sidetracked. This video is specifically talking about damage to the intake camshaft because recently I reused one of these intake camshafts after bending valves and I got a P0011 camshaft fault about, it would come on consistently about 15 to 18 miles after you reset it. It would consistently come back on and I'll show you why. But first, let me talk about, so this got damaged because when the valves bend, uh, let me just show you a cylinder head. This specific cylinder head bent the intake valves and the exhaust valves on every single cylinder. So if you're wondering if the valves are bent, one of the easiest things you can do is just remove the intake manifold and then you can look through and you can see that all the valves are open Every single port will have open valves. Typically it's easier because on other engines, there's not a camshaft tray. There's just little caps right here and then just a normal valve cover. But this one's more difficult because you have to take the whole camshaft tray off. This is the camshaft tray and it actually bolts the camshafts into place. So you have to be careful with that. I always suggest popping this out because this little baffle right here it's only held on with two little tiny spring tabs and i can probably even just about pull it out with my bare finger this one's actually in there kind of decent but what happens is you'll go to an oil change shop and, and they'll push their little uh, plunger in there to fill oil their little uh, like gas type nozzle valve they'll put that in there to pump oil and you'll bend one of these little tabs on this baffle. See how it's just that little trigger tab on either side? This will fall down into your engine 
it'll it'll get messed up and and locked up in your valve train little bits and pieces of it will shred off it'll get caught up in your springs in your lifters and your rocker arms and then ultimately these pieces of metal will go all the way down in your oil pan and clog your pickup tube so it's nice just to uh, take some needle nose pliers and and pull this thing out from the top then you don't have to worry about it it's just an oil baffle it's a little safety device but you have to be a little bit more careful not to get crud in your oil cap once you take it off and you don't want to put your fingers down there with the oil cap off with your engine running obvious stuff so you don't really need that baffle it's it's a lot safer if you take it out you don't have to worry about if you're doing your own oil changes and you're just pouring it in from the top with a plastic bottle you never have to worry about it theoretically now i never have a problem with this exhaust cam because i don't slide these things around and mess with them uh, we can't get into that on disassembly though i'll do a full engine rebuild video a professional one uh, start to finish here soon and then that will be what everybody can use you don't have to uh, look around for all the information on it and if people want in-person help with these uh, just tell me in the comments naptown tuner yahoo.com so this one looks pretty nice like i was saying but whenever the the valves get bent it jams the rocker arms the rocker arms can break and they can rotate and and then all these loose parts can interfere with these camshaft lobes with this reluctor wheel or this uh, trigger wheel and this everything on here is pressed on it's not welded on or machined on or anything like that it uh, they're pressed on lobes so if it hits this not only can it kind of mess up the signal but it can also spin this wheel so then your timing is off your signal is showing that the timing is not accurate the same thing can happen with these camshaft lobes you'll have to look at each camshaft lobe down like this to make sure that they're in line with each other and maybe three times in my experience working on these engines after bending valves i've noticed that one of the camshaft lobes was slightly offset and it would cause a rough running engine it wasn't ever bad enough to maybe cause a check engine light or anything else but it would it would cause a lumpy engine at idle and uh, this one right here i can't feel it with my fingernails but you can tell it looks a little bit grooved so anytime i would reuse a camshaft because a good aftermarket camshaft for the intake is about 700 dollars, and then an oem audi camshaft is like 1100 dollars. you can't buy just this adjuster mechanism on the front on this specific engine you have to buy the whole camshaft for some reason the third generation 2.0t has a very inexpensive camshaft it's only like around 300 dollars. i don't know why they're sticking it to us with these how expensive these things are i've tried chinese a long time ago i tried chinese intake camshafts that are about 150 200 dollars. i don't know what the price is nowadays the first one caused a timing fault i replaced it i know how to do timing and everything i replaced it and then the second one caused the same exact because they sent me a replacement the second one caused the same exact timing fault i can't remember what exact fault it was but the second time i just ran it for a couple thousand miles and by the time i finally got around to actually replacing the camshaft to a good one all of these screws were falling out and uh, they were actually shearing into my camshaft adjuster bridge now let me talk about the camshaft adjuster bridge real quick while i'm at it that's one of the common issues it will scar up this snout there's these two camshafts this exhaust side is actually on this side and the intake is actually on this side and there's a bridge that goes over it oil flows inside of it and then it uh, then the oil lubricates these snouts now that screen always busts out of this camshaft bridge and sometimes that screen the particles of it can go all the way back to the vacuum pump so you always want to clean out the port the screen on the back of the vacuum pump 
That screen on the back of the vacuum pump, you always want to keep that one in there because it looks like it has a little tiny orifice tube in it. it. That supplies your high pressure fuel pump cam lobe. It, this lobe right here, this pushes on your high pressure fuel pump. So that's where the oil supply goes to that, to the vacuum pump and everything else. So you want to make sure that you have your restrictor built into that. Don't take that one out. But I always do take out this screen. You, if, if it's not busted yet, or if I'm putting a new camshaft bridge on it, I take the screen out of the brand new part. And if it's an old part, I make sure to clean up all the bits and pieces and uh, blow out all the orifices and make sure that whatever's left in that, if there's any screen left, I take that out. Now, so I talked about how everything's pressed on right here and these can spin. What I re I talked about how you can't drag your nail in any of these, so theoretically it's probably fine, but anytime it looks grooved like this, I like to have the machine shop put a polish on it. And they do that, perfect. I'm sure you could do it by hand, but I get my cylinder heads rebuilt and I always just put my intake camshaft in the cylinder head and they know that they should polish it whenever it's supplied with the head. Now, this one, something I saw new on these things is I did not catch this one. I started talking about it, but these camshaft adjusters should have a little bit of slop in it like this. You should be able to move it back and forth and kind of hear it clicking around a little bit. And if I do that to this one, you can't hear anything on this one. It's completely locked up. And if you look down this passage port, this cutaway, it's a little bit tilted. It's a little bit jacked up. When this one bent valves, it actually seized this adjuster mechanism in the front. And that's why I was getting a consistent fault about 15 to 18 miles after running the engine, it would set a P0011. So if you take your intake camshaft out, you need to make sure that all the lobes are straight. You're not really gonna have anything to compare it by if, if this right here is spun, but if it looks like this where it hit, it might be spun. But I'll go ahead and just show you in this video. So this one's locked up. That one's suspect. This one is how it should be. So this adjuster moves a little bit. This was not hit. And I'm kind of get a visual on what this camshaft lobe looks like. See that little dot right there? That little dot pretty much lines up with the end of that piece right here. So that's what your camshaft should look like if this is not spun from hitting stuff. Kind of get you a view all the way around it so you can get an accurate representation. It looks like it's pretty much in line. This dot looks like it's pretty much in line with the end of that trigger wheel. And that's pretty much all I gotta say in this video, so go ahead and like and subscribe.